So sorry for the delay. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so my name is Luis Benet. I work in Cuernavaca, also at the National uh, University in Mexico. And uh, together with David Sanders, we built up this thing, which is called Tay Taylor Series. So let me very briefly remind you what's a Taylor Series. I mean, if you have a very smooth function, somehow you want to approximate it around the point, and essentially you write this polynomial of any degree. Now, the coefficients here are related with the derivatives. So in a way, if you are interested in computing precisely very high order derivatives, you, you have to care about Taylor series expansions. And what we have been doing is implementing a series of uh, tools which are related with automatic differentiation to compute th those kind of things. We have done that for uh, a Taylor series in one single variable, independent variable, and also in the multiple variables. In multiple variables, is a bit uh, uncomfortable. These things are actually um, coefficients on monomials uh, of, uh, of homogeneous polynomials, so things get a bit uh, uh, trickier. We have done it explicitly by recursive uh, computations, so the application is not the laziest one or maybe the most comfortable one to work with, but it is actually very handy. Now, the point that I want to draw here, it is that you can represent one of those Taylor series as a vector of coefficients of either homogeneous polynomials or simply numbers. So what I will do, it is show you how does this thing work. So the, the, the package is called Taylor uh, uh, series. It is on, on metadata. Uh, and well, you simply define this way a Taylor uh, variable. So what is that? That's simply a Taylor one emphasizing that you have one independent variable. Now, if you, if you look at what's going on inside, you have a vector of coefficients and the order. The order is the maximum uh, uh, thing that you will compute, which in this case will be the 17. So everything will be of order 18. So you can simply now construct different things. If you write something to a larger uh, order, then you, get, oopa, then you get clearly a zero. So somewhere over there. Now, we have implemented uh, a bunch of uh, very basic um, uh, functions. You can make it work, for instance, with imaginary, uh, with complex numbers. You can compute the, the usual things. You can convert it to rationals and things like that. And then you get very nice representations. Um, you can, since these are polynomials, you can very trivially differentiate them. You can also integrate them. And you can play uh, to see whether the integral of a differential is the same. Now, the, the integral uh, needs, uh, where, where is it, the initial value to be fixed. If I wouldn't fix this here as I was doing here, then I get a zero. Now, you can compute any derivative uh, directly from the Taylor series expansion, and you can check whether that holds or not. You can do all kinds of things. and. This is some uh, nasty function that appeared this morning. And you can tailor expand it, and then you see that there will be a root of higher order. So you can do, I mean, the usual typical things, cosinus, evaluate. Notice that this is an uh, 17, uh, well, so, sorry, 17 uh, order, uh, 18 order tailor expansion. I will evaluate it, uh, which is around 0. So this is the reason you get 1, 1 half, and so forth. I will evaluate it in p halves, which is very far away from, uh, from uh, zero. And then you get, I mean, something which is reasonably zero. <coughs> you can go beyond that and then, I mean, check whether it holds also in minus pi, and then you get also something very, very reasonable. <coughs> and you can check whether the precision is right or not. Now, for many independent variables, we created the type Taylor n, which again has a vector of coefficients and an order. And when, what makes the application non-lazy, it is that you have to fix a couple of things. You have to define what's the number of variables you want to work and the order of the maximum expansion. And beautifully, you can actually play with the names of these things. So for instance, <coughs> this would be what is actually inside one of these things. Th there is a table, a dictionary, which actually holds all the polynomials of a given order. Which, in, uh, since Julia begins uh, labeling everything in one, you have the order is 
n plus 1. So let me now play again uh, a little bit with some uh, variables. Let me define only two variables and then order 10 on, in my expansions. Again, this is the, the contents, uh, I mean the parameters that we will be, uh, be dealing with. This is the type of whatever I just defined. The coefficients are homogeneous polynomials, and what is an homogeneous polynomial is a set of, of coefficients of a given order in this dictionary way of arranging them. Now you can, again, do some basic functions, for instance, the exponential, get the coefficient of somewhere which you have somewhere inside, so you can look for x rise to the power 2 and then y uh, rise to the power 6, and somewhere over there you will get this number. Um, <coughs> Uh, you can also get the whole monomial, uh, uh, sorry, uh, homogeneous polynomial. Uh, you can evaluate things, you can check how accurate are they, and I mean, you can do lots of other things. Now, here you, you care about doing some partial differenti uh, differentiation, so here I am providing a function, I am derivating with respect to the first variable or with respect to the second one, and you see that things sort of work. You can define gradients, you also using NABLA, you can uh, calculate Jacobians of vector fields, you can define even nastier functions and then get the, Hess uh, the Hessian. So, I mean, the very basic structure is already there and can be even more uh, extended further. Now, I have no idea what's going on with the display. Uh, well, this is an identity proof by Euler long time ago, which is I mean, this product on four different variables, and then you get a very nice t polynomial. So let's uh, prove it right here. So I have created my set of variables. I need eight variables of order four. Uh, the reason for order four, which I, do, I have no idea where it is. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, it is here. The reason for having order four it is that we are multiplying two second order polynomials. So we, de we define the left hand side we define the right-hand side, and we check it whether they are the same, and yes, I mean. So, now, what's actually the kind of applications we have in mind for, uh, with this? So we care about integrating equations, uh, or ordinary differential equations, and the idea is to do it as precise as possible. Now, the whole idea is if you expand your dependent variable as a Taylor expansion, and also the right-hand side of your equation, you sort of equate uh, independent terms, and then you end up with this recurrence equation. And that, the idea of integrating any ODE is to end up with these kind of things. So I will try to show it with the uh, easiest example, which will be the Kepler motion. So here are, in Julia, the equations of Kepler motion. So Jupiter rotating around the sun, and the sun, uh, the sun we will be thought in the center of mass. So I have. Uh, written a couple of wrappers. I don't go into the details now. <coughs> uh, it takes a little bit too long, and you will see why, because it is calculating a bunch of points. The thing is that since you are actually expanding, uh, uh, I think in, in this case it is order 28, the, the Taylor expansion, and you, we are fixing the precision to be 10 to the minus 20, then you have a bunch of points, so 4, 8, 3, 6, uh, thousand uh, points. And this is the mean uh, step. Now the kind of trajectory I have been computed uh, has eccentricity 1 and semi-major axis 1. Opa. Well, so we don't care about the orbit. Now, what, however, what we do care about it is how the energy and the angular momentum, which are the conserved quantities, behave. And you see that the error in the units of the epsilon machine of the energy, which is around 1, and the angular momentum, which is also around 1, behave as a random uh, Brownian motion. So since my time is over, I'm sorry, uh, I will end up here. So thank you very much for your attention. <coughs> It is not related. We also are contributing now to the Julia Diff organization. I think it could be related. I think it could be. Now, uh, our design was using arrays. Uh, I think uh, the design below uh, hyper uh, dual numbers is related with tuples. As, uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> One more question? Anybody has one? 
not the snicker speaker again.